Hey everybody, uh, so we're going to do another Star Wars review. I'm sorry, I'm, I meant to do this on Friday, but there was a Mystery Science Theater 3000 marathon or telethon thing that was going on. I was just way too busy. So I watched it Saturday night, and then I couldn't, by the time I finished it, it was uh, it was too late in the, in the morning or whatever. And then um, Sunday I just didn't have the time, and now finally I have the time Tuesday. Uh, Monday I didn't have the time either. So it's just been a little crazy. I'm still going to do Return of the Jedi review. But um, it's uh, going to be it, basically as soon as I can because I want to get it out before the movie comes out or on Friday. I probably will do it Friday, um, but we'll see. Uh, I'll get it worked out. Anyway, um, this is going to be a much longer review. Uh, Empire Strikes Back is a much more interesting uh, sort of. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on here as as the as the sort of arc of the whole thing ramps up and up. So um, we'll just get right into it. Um, so the first part of my review is going to be just opening remarks, just my thoughts on the film. And then one of my friends, Gina uh, Luttrell, had some thoughts, uh, criticisms of the film, some of which I agree with, some of which I don't, some of which I like, sort of agree with, but don't completely. Um, none of the things that she says really ruin the film for me, um, but I do admit that some of her grievances with, the pro w grievances with the film are not grievances that I noticed myself. And when she pointed them out, I, I do agree with at least some of them. Anyway, we'll get into my opening remarks first. So I want to first note that I'm uh, watching the DVD version as opposed to the previous version, which was just, like, you know, online or whatever, um, and completely legal. Um, and uh, so I don't... I, this isn't really framed or changed the framing of most of my commentary. There's still special effects, and they fucking suck <laughs> for the most part. Like, the Tauntauns look awful. Palpatine looks terrible. Anything that they really try to do, like, a lot of special effects with just don't, don't look very good. Um, but that it's only very sporadically and it doesn't really take away from the film. Um, so Empire Strikes Back, I mean, you know, again, I don't really think I really need to go over what it's about, but just after the, the events of the first film, uh, the Empire, get ready for it, wait for it, wait, strikes back. Uh, and they basically come full force against the Rebel Alliance. Now they're taking them as a serious threat. They're just trying to wipe them out. Darth Vader wants to kill Luke and it's just, a, it's, it's a black, it's a really uplifting film if you think about it. Um, anyway, um, so within, uh, so as the movie opens, we once again see a Star Destroyer like before. Also within the first few minutes, Luke is knocked out by basically what amounts to a, a Sasquatch, a snow Sasquatch, uh, what do they call that? Um, I'm forgetting the technical term for it. But anyway, there's this great crack video that I'll link, link in the description about how Jedi are idiots. And that kind of links into Luke being knocked out within the first few minutes. Although he's not technically a Jedi yet, so... Yeah, um, you know, but even if he's not, he's just kind of lazy with the saber throughout the film. Like when he does get his uh, get back on his feet to fight the monster or whatever it is. I I didn't look up the name. Sorry, I um, guess I'm kind of lazy as well. Um, you know, he just kind of like I don't know swings the saber around and barely seems to be like actually aiming at the thing. So I don't know. Um, and even after he gets the training from Yoda later in the film, Vader just kind of toys with him. Like, it's pretty clear that, for the most part, Vader's toying with him. I think Luke gets one hit on Vader the whole time they have that lightsaber fi fight. And, like, after that, like, Luke is uh, <clears throat> disarmed, if you will. We'll get to that later, though. Um, I also want to mention briefly 3PO. I'm not going to talk about C-3PO too much in the film, but he does have a few good lines, like, he is cl quite clever, you know, for a human being. And also, sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. I also love when C-3PO says, Wonderful! I don't know why. I just have always remembered that. I love that line. Um, there's a small little thing during the Hoth invasion, the, when the Empire comes in, that I wanted to nitpick about. And they're looking for Han and Luke. Uh, the pilot says that I found them, but he only knows through the intercom that Han is alive for sure. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess by, by Han's tone, maybe... Um, he knows that they're alive, or whatever, I don't know. Then there's that unfortunate kiss between, it, the first movie wasn't bad enough about, um, about, like, Luke and Leia having, like, implied romance when they're brother and sister. I, I forgot that they, like, full-on make out in this one, which, yeah, yeah. I, I know, like, it's, it, so many people have, like, talked about this, so I'm not gonna belabor it, and it's not really a huge deal, but I feel compelled as a Star Wars fan to mention it, sorry. On a brighter note, I do love the probe's noises. Uh, the probe that comes down like a meteor to the um, to the to Hoth to investigate whether there's life forms or not. You think about it actually, Han and Chewie basically sabotaged the whole 
the whole operation of the rebels, I think, right? Because the the probe gets a scan of them and then self destructs, and you know after that, Vader's is convinced, you know, that the um, that the rebels are there. So I don't know. I don't know if that is really Chewie and 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 Han's fault. I, I don't. I don't really know. Um, so the next thing is uh, even in a brighter in a way. I love Chewie with his with the snow on his face. It just looks really cool. I I don't know why. Um, one question I did have. Where or how did the rebels get such a strong force field to to like repel star destroyers? Where did they get that? Like that's never explained. Like I, I I'm fine with it. It's not a big gaping plot hole or whatever. I just kind of accept it. You know, whatever. But because we don't really know the rebels' capabilities, we just know that they're not as strong as the Empire. Otherwise, they'd be challenging them in other ways. Um, this funny thing keeps happening throughout the film, and it's been kind of made fun of elsewhere, but Vader keeps killing his captains or admirals or what the fuck ever, people who are barely below him or something, because they keep fucking up. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that later, though. Fun discussion there. Speaking of fun discussions, let's talk about AT-ATs. If you don't know, AT-ATs are like those elephant-like mechs that basically, like, are just fucking unstoppable. Um, although, on the other hand, I do love when the AT-AT, um, when it falls... And when the, um, for some reason that makes the, the, um, the armor like pierceable, I don't know why, maybe it has some sort of force field, it's not really explained, but god damn it, I love that scene where the, um, where the pilots just drive by, and just do the shooting, wow, this sounds bad, out of context, and, um, anyway, it's great, and the at, -AT explodes, it's great, but then there's three more at -ATs. the rebels kind of are fucked, and the, the at -ATs keep, um, swatting the ships away like flies, like, there's this one scene where the, the at, -AT kind of, um, twists its head, like, a little bit, or whatever, like, you know, through the pilot, and it just kind of, like, just shoots it, shoots one of the ships once, and it just goes, Woo, just like that. Um, yeah, the AT-ATs are, like, super menacing. I mean, they, they look gargantuan. They are gargantuan. I think they, the Rebels, like, destroy, I think, two out of five of the AT-ATs. But, yeah, it's not enough. And eventually their, uh, their, their whatever is destroyed, their power generator. Oh, excuse me. Um, the Snowtroopers. I love the Snowtroopers design. It is so great. Um, we're gonna see the Red Guard design, or I don't remember what they're called for the for Palpatine. The next one, we never see them fight or do are in action much, but they're really cool too. Anyway, eventually the Falcon gets out of there, the Millennium Falcon with uh, Leia and Han and three PO and R two D two. No, not not R two. R two goes with uh, with Luke to the Dagobah system, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, and I just remember, like, they cut to the Falcon in space, and the Falcon's, like, you know, basically running away from a bunch of TIE fighters and a Star Destroyer, or whatever it's called, and I'm like, I literally said out loud, <laughs> I literally laughed, and I was like, oh, Jesus, so, um, and then we have the lovely asteroid field scene versus never tell me the odds, uh, you know, C-3PO's like, well, our odds of survival, blah, 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 never tell me the odds. Um, we got to see the back of Vader's head. Sexy stuff, I've, I've got to tell you. Very sexy. Um, I also want to sort of remind people, I'm recording this on a, my internal webcam. I don't have an external one right now. So if the quality is bad like it was last time, I apologize. But there's not much I can do about it. Um, these are casual videos anyway, so I'm not trying to be professional. Um, anyway, um, and then out of the con asteroid field, they find this you know large hole. Turns out to be a sand war worm or whatever. Um, and then there's some bomb TIE fighters and stuff like that. Um, there's some more stuff about Dagobah. We'll get into that in a second. Um, I love that they keep using, I have a bad feeling about this. And they did that while they were in the, uh, worm thing or whatever it's called. I don't know what the official name is. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the force and, and Dagobah and Yoda and stuff like that. And I won't go too into Yoda because, uh, one of Gina's issues was that she hated Yoda. I don't hate Yoda. I don't, I think I remember him less fondly than I, I, I think I feel about him less fondly than I used to, but I still like Yoda, I don't hate him. Um, anyway, um, so one of the things Yoda says is that there's much anger in him, like his father, but that doesn't, that doesn't really mean that he's going to turn out like Anakin, right? Like, so Anakin, Anakin turns to the dark side, I don't like talking about the prequels, but I'm going to, for sake of, because because it's canon and for sake of discussion, I will talk about the prequels for a second. Um, and yes, I'm a total snob about the prequels. I make no apologies about it. I really dislike the prequels. 
Um, anyway, so in the prequels, Anakin turns to the dark side because his mother's forced into slavery. She's killed, beaten, possibly other things have happened to her. Uh, you know, remember kids, you know, you remember kids film. Um, anyway, uh, all that happens to him. Padme might die with their child. I mean, there's just so much more going on with Anakin and Palpatine like clenches on that. And he uses that as an, a, a way to emotionally get to him. All Darth Vader really wants to do is, and Palpatine wants to do, and more so Vader, um, wants to do is turn Luke to the dark side. They don't really care about his friends or about like his feelings for Leia, which we're not going to get into again. Uh, you know, whatever. I mean, he uses them. They he Vader uses uh, his friends as a trap, but he doesn't. He doesn't use them as a way to. Um, so as I was saying, Vader uses uh, Luke's friends as bait, but he doesn't really tap into that emotional thing, right? He, he's just trying to get him into carbon freeze, right? So I don't know. I don't think Yoda's, I don't think Yoda's concern is really well placed here. I don't feel like it's necessary. I guess. Um, so and besides that, like, just because you have anger doesn't mean necessarily you're going to let it consume you. This is the problem with the Jedi. They don't want they don't want their 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 pupils or whatever to have any emotions at all. They don't want any attachment. They're they're like Buddhists, you know. I'm not an expert on Buddhism, but as far as I understand it, there's a emphasis, a well known emphasis on detachment, detaching yourself from the world and things around you, and that's kind of where the Jedi are coming from. And it's super annoying because like there's nothing wrong with feeling anger. Um, you can ha be angry at the wrong things. You can be angry in the wrong amount at the wrong thing. You know, I'm kind of being a virtue ethicist here. But anger in of itself is not bad. And it just frustrates me to no end that the Jedi seem to think that being angry is like somehow inherently bad or inherently wrong. And that's just not the case. Um, so yeah. Moreover, um, I have other things like that. Like, there's no time for excitement or adventures. You've got to be serious all the time. I just, I don't like the Jedi, and I don't like the Sith. And I didn't get into this earlier in the first vid video, because honestly, I didn't think to, to talk about it. I don't like the Jedi. Um, I don't like, I, I don't like their monk aesthetic. I, I don't mind aestheticism, aestheticism. I don't mind, like, like, trying to be minimalist. You know, I like tiny houses. I like not having a lot of things. That's fine. I just don't like imposing that culturally on other people. Educating people about it, whatever. I mean, I guess technically the Jedi is like a a private club that's just happens to be aesthetic. Uh, a bunch of aesthetics. I'm saying this wrong, probably. <coughs> but it's still, like, annoying to me. Like, they take it in these really d bizarre directions where you can't, you know... You basically, like, can't marry anybody, which, I mean, I don't like marriage, but, you know, it's like it's so controlling and it's so you know no wonder people go to the dark side because it's like at least in the dark side you can feel your freaking emotions right like the jedi are like you know do not feel your emotions because they will lead to the dark side it's like what like people have emotions they get angry they get upset like there's nothing wrong with embracing that to certain extents like and and i think the point of the original trilogy and I, somebody pointed this out earlier I, I don't remember who um is that Luke is the one who's going to balance the force by saying, look, light side and the dark side both have points. And as, as one of my favorite philosophers would say, the people who are right and people who are wrong are just saying the same thing, something like that. Um, but anyway, um, it's just super annoying. I, I don't like the Jedi. I don't like the Sith. I, I feel like the best spot for the force is a balance is in the middle, you know, the golden mean, the Aristotelian thing. Anyway, um, I do agree with the Jedi, or agree with, you know, um, uh, Yoda about this, that the, the, the Force is for knowledge and defense, not attack, and so I, I agree with that, obviously I'm a libertarian, so I agree with the non-aggression principle, I agree, like, self-defense is morally fine, but initiatory violence is not, generally speaking, <coughs> um, and so, yeah, I, I, I think that's fine. I think any good philosophy on the basis of the Force would be based on knowledge and defense, not initiatory aggression. Um, there's this article about the Dagobah cave. I think it's on, like, StarWars.com. It's, like, an official article or whatever. And it's about Yoda saying only, only uh, you know, take only what you want with you, or however Yoda actually says it. Only what you take with you. Yeah. He says, you know, 
basically like Luke just ignores him as he's going to I guess what it's called the dark side cave and um, it, what, what ends up happening is he kind of like literally fights himself in Darth Vader and I guess like he's fighting his inner demons about his anger and about his confusion and about yeah I mean this film is a lot heavier just for that scene alone it's a lot heavier on explicit well relatively speaking explicit philosophy about fighting oneself and trying to figure out like how you feel about the world and stuff like that. And so this is sort of inner demon conflict, also sort of a um, a, uh, a Plato's cave sort of thing going on, where you know you have to go in to uh, you you come out enlightened. I I didn't read the article. I have read the article. I just haven't reread it. I meant to, but I forgot. So whoops. Uh, it'll be in the description uh, if I have any uh, extra comments about the article. Maybe I'll put in the description or the next video. That's not likely. But, you know. Anyway, I love the line that Vader gives. This is a little bit of a separate thing. Um, but I just really briefly just want to say the line he gives to Boba Fett about no disintegrations. Very funny. Just looks at him, says, no disintegrations. I want them alive. Very good line. Anyway. Um, the Yeah, so I like Yoda. And one of the reasons why I like Yoda is... I like him because his sageness. I don't like it because I don't like him necessarily because he acts like a fool, or he you know he acts kind of silly at first or whatever. I like it because of the, all the philosophical discussion about the Force. You know, um, Yoda's kind of a affirmations ish ish, kind of an affirmations guy. Like, you know, do or do not. There is no try. You know, always with you. Nothing can be done. Only different in your mind. You know, you want, you know, um, you know, the, the, the reason why Luke fails so much is because he doesn't believe because he, he, he's a little whiny, you know, I, I, I don't think that's as big of a deal as some people make it out to be, but yeah, Luke can be a little whiny. It's not really until Return of the Jedi that he starts, stops being whiny and, you know, whatever. I don't think it's a big deal, but I will admit it is a thing. I understand why it annoys people. It doesn't bother me a lot. It bothers me a little. Like, when he's, like... When Luke gets all huffy and puffy about, like, you want the impossible to Yoda after, like, he... Like, after Yoda's, like, you you can raise that land speeder or, or whatever it is, your ship. You can raise it out of the out of the bog. And Luke's, like, you want the impossible. And I'm, like, really? After all the motivating shit that, that Yoda did it... Yoda, Yoda did for you? You're just gonna, like, kind of whinily say you want the impossible? Like... And then Yoda, of course, fucking shows him and just like you know raises the the ship, his ship, Luke's ship, out of the uh, out of the bog, and it's just like, come on, dude! Like he gave you this whole motivating speech, and you're like, well, I'm not gonna do it because it's it's hard. And um, yeah, I I know it it is hard, and Luke is dealing with a lot of internal shit. I mean, he's fucking fighting the Empire right now, and is supposedly this great Jedi or hero. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of stress. I don't think it's entirely un unforgivable that he's acting the way he is. And he also is still a teenager, and we'll get to that later. But yeah, I I like Yoda, to go back to it, because he talks about the Force. You know, the Force and the feel and your feelings. You know, you stretch out with your feelings. You, you try to be really aware of your surroundings and take it in and stuff like that. Um, it's all about, I, I guess, you know, feelings are a superpower. I think that's like a, a, a trope on TV tropes. But, um... It's, um, you know, it, it's a it's a popular thing, and, and the, the Jedi go with it, too. Basically, like, use your inner strength to have, uh, to, uh, to impact the world. Anyway, lots of the things that Yoda says are interesting, worth discussing, I like. I love, I like, I love Frank Oz, his voice actor, and puppeteer, I think. Uh, great, great voice, um, you know. Um, yeah, I don't have much more to say. I, I like Yoda. I don't, I don't think he's the best character. I think he's fine. I, I like him fine. Um, the other thing was weird is that when Luke is trying to convince Obi-Wan and Yoda that he can leave, he's like, I've learned so much since then. What? You haven't learned so much? How, how, okay, this is kind of where I agree with Gina. How long has Luke been training on Dagobah? Like, it, it doesn't seem that long. It seems like less than a day. Like, how have you learned so much? We don't see any signs of him sleeping or getting sleep. In fact, I don't think anybody sleeps in this whole movie. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's like... Uh, how much time has passed since 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 then, you know? 
I don't know. There's also an interesting discussion about the quick and easy versus patience. You know, Luke wants to save his friends, but Yoda and Obi-Wan are very sure of themselves that, um, you know, uh, that if he does the quick and easy task, that he'll go to the dark side and he'll destroy everything Leia and Han have been fighting for. Ironically, Yoda's like, the future is always unclear, and, you know, it's not clear what will happen to your friends. Yet, he's so certain that this is kind of a genuinely annoying. He's so certain that if Luke does this and stops his training, he's going to destroy everything that Han and Leia fought for. Of course, as we know, that doesn't end up happening. But, you know, Yoda's kind of hypocrisy here and never gets treated. Um, I will say something about hate in the dark side in the Jedi. I, um, I, I don't like hate, um, and I don't like... Um, I, I hate hate. Um... No, I, I don't like hate. I, I think it's, generally speaking, a useless emotion. Um, I will um, I will link in the description a, a, an article by Roger T. Long called Thinking With Our Anger. I think it makes a great argument against hate while making a compelling argument for anger. I don't know if hate necessarily leads to the dark side. I guess I'm more sympathetic to that argument. I don't know if, that's, I don't know if it's causal, but yeah, but no. Um, but I think that um, it's, it's, it's more likely, I'll say. Um, so the, the, the one thing I do want to talk about is that the, um, is the double-edged sort of being an admiral under Vader in this movie. Um, hierarchy in general, if you're not on the top, you're getting shit on to some extent. There's, like, this picture of birds, and they're all, like, you know, ordered by a hierarchy, and the top is, you know, shitting on the, the next bottom, and so on and so forth, and it's all kind of trickling down until the people on the, on the bottom have the most shit on them. <laughs> And um, it's not as gross as it sounds. It's actually a pretty good photo. I use it often on uh, C4SS's YouTube channel, Feed44. Ha, plug. Yeah, look at that. All right, anyway, ShamWow. Um, so, yeah, I it's it sucks to be an admiral in this movie. Like, it sucks to be under Vader. Even though they keep winning, Vader keeps having these small setbacks and then like, eh, fuck you, I don't need you. Like, I'm going to kill you. Like, whoa, okay. I know he's a bad guy, but damn, dude, like, these are just, like, mistakes, like, I don't know, anyway, it's not, a, it, it's just a funny little thing, it's definitely a double-edged sword about being on the top, um, this discussion about trust that I kind of want to briefly go into, like, this is trust between Han and La Lando, I almost said Lando, Lando, and then Lando and Vader, um, you know, like, I think, Lando and, like, Han and Leia keep having fucking discussions about whether they can trust Lando or not. Of course, in the end, he double-crosses them, and then he triple-crosses Vader. So, it's not a very trustworthy person. Um, and then Han and, or Lando and Vader, like, Vader, this is kind of like making a deal with the devil. Like, you know you're going to get a bad deal, dude. Like, you know, I, I understand that, like, you want to do what was minimally right, like, basically what Lando tries to do is he tries to protect Chewie and Leia, and, like, he gives up, you know, Han, because, fine, he, um, you know, he, uh, you know, he's wanted by the Empire, he's not gonna fight the Empire, um, but I don't know, uh, Lando also gives the worst sorry I've ever heard in my life towards them, um, I love the line from Leia that, uh, you certainly have a way with people from Leia to Han. That was a really good line. Um, let's get into the lightsaber fight, and then I will get into um, uh, Gina's comments. Um, so, oh my god. I love the lightsaber fight. It is it is my favorite part of this whole film, and it's not just because I love lightsaber fights. This, this, um, god, I'm so excited about talking about this. This lightsaber fight is one of the best in the original trilogy. Like, I like the one between uh, Obi-Wan and Vader, but man, that is so fucking tame compared to this lightsaber fight. It is just, it is so good. The, the best thing about the trilogy is that they knew when and where to put the lightsaber fights and how long to make them, and, and the chore uh, choreography is just fantastic. They didn't oversaturate everything with lightsaber here, lightsaber there. Most of the movie, uh, Luke is just using a blaster, even when he's trying to save Leia and Han. He uses a blaster. So, I mean, it's just like, ah, oh, it, it's so good. The So one of the fun, one of the first things um, is, you know, they, they start fighting each other. And it's a little even, but you can clearly tell that, like, Vader's more experienced and <laughs> Luke's about to get his ass kicked. Um, and um, I love the line where Luke is like, um, 
Darth Vader's like, Obi-Wan taught you well, um, you know, or whatever. And Luke's like, you'll find I'm full of many surprises. And then he gets, like, kicked down the stairs <laughs> and almost gets into the carbon freeze. But then he jumps out. Uh, he does, like, a force jump. And uh, Vader's like, impressive, most impressive. I always love that line. And um, and actually, Luke does get two, um, two hits on Vader. Only one with the lightsaber. But... Um, but yeah, and then he like uses this like smoke that he like he lost his lightsaber or whatever, and he uses um like a big pipe or whatever, a big uh smoke thing on Vader, and Vader goes, Vader goes like ah, so that I don't really count that as a hit, but uh, that helps him get his lightsaber back, and then he keeps fighting, and because Vader's disorientated, he gets a nice kick off him, and Vader goes ah, and yeah, I always love when Vader makes any noise about getting hit. It's such a great fight. I mean, it is. Ah, oh, I could go on and on about how great a fight it is. Like just the choreography, the background, the music, the 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 acting, the everything about this fight is just vintage Star Wars. I mean, literally and figuratively. Um, phase two of what I'd call the fight is when after uh, when when Luke is going through those awesome fucking tunnels. I love tunnels. I don't know why, but just. I don't know, they're so cool. Like, ventilation shafts and stuff like that, I think they're really cool, at least abstractly. Never been in one myself, but, you know. Phase 2 is all about the Force. It's much shorter than I remember, but basically, like, Vader's just like, nah, fuck this shit, I'm just gonna... You know, I'm done toying with him. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna toy with him, I'm gonna toy with him a little rougher. I'm gonna try a little harder. So he just keeps throwing things at Luke, and Luke tries to, like, fight back against him and stuff, but just Vader just keeps piling on things after things at him, and eventually, like, Luke goes out the window, literally. Phase 3 is all about intensity, like, thematically, um, acting, violence, everything. Um, Luke gets one hit on Vader, and I think it's when, like, Vader overshoots his shot, or overshoots his swing, and Luke, like, hits him on the shoulder, and Vader goes, ah, and that's it. That's the one hit. After that, like, a few seconds later, D Vader literally disarms uh, <laughs> Luke. Sorry, I know it's an awful pun, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and, you know, delivers the whole, no, I am your father. And, you know, Luke basically literally considers suicide over, you know, joining uh, the Empire. So that's amazing. Um, so let's, let's talk about Gina's comments. Um, I would summarize Gina's comments as um, basically Han is an asshole, Leia does nothing, Yoda is annoying, and time is just jointed. Uh, I'll say very briefly at the beginning, I agree Han is a dick, although it doesn't ruin the film with, for me because he's a watchable asshole um, or a dick. Uh, Leia does nothing. This is mostly true. I will have a few nitpicks, but she's mostly right here, and yeah, that is annoying. Uh, Yoda is annoying. I, I don't agree with that. I can see why she says that, um, and I'll get more into that in a bit. Time is disjointed. Eh, you could say that about any space film or any of the Star Wars films. It didn't really bother me, except um, with, when um, when it was sort of time was highlighted when when Luke said, "You know, I've learned so much since then," or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, that was the only part that time felt disjointed to me in retrospect. Even at the time, it didn't feel that bad, and even now. Eh. So uh, I'll, I'll take it line by line. I'm not going to quote the whole thing at once. Um, so Han, so Gina first says. Um, Han is a dick to everyone around him. It's like the writers decided that being a rogue meant you were a dick and that the ladies liked that. Yeah. The, the, uh, the Mary Sue have talked about this. I haven't read the article, but there's an article by the Mary Sue about, you know, what Han and Leia taught um, this woman about. I presume it's a woman, but I don't know. They usually have female authors, so it's not a bad presumption. Um, you know, um, taught the, her about sexuality and gender and stuff like that. Yeah, they're kind of going with the whole he's bad, so Leia secretly wants him. It, it's it's, uh, it's sketchy. I don't like it. Um, so it's sort of a character arc. Like in the first movie, Han is like a quintessential r r like scoundrel with a heart of gold kind of thing. But in this movie, he's a little more scoundrel than heart of gold. Um, I will talk. Let's let's talk about Leia and Han because first thing, the next thing, uh, Gina says, I almost called her Leia, uh, which I'm sure she would have appreciated. Uh, is she says seriously? Han is an asshole to Leia. Let's just talk about Leia and Han because most of the film is honestly dedicated to them. It's a little annoying. So here are some points in Han's favor, and I'm I'm pretty sure these are the only points in Han's favor. So when I finish the list, I actually consider this list near exhaustive for me personally. I don't think there are many other points in Han's favor. 
So points in his favor. He goes to save Luke's life in the beginning. He explicitly says that he will risk dying for Luke. He says, you know, then I'll see you in hell to the to the guy who says you'll die out there. So that's pretty cool. Whatever you think of him otherwise, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, Han and Luke do get along fine, although Gina does make the note that they have like 30 seconds of screen time and Luke is unconscious for most of it. Yeah, that's true. And I don't really think it defeats the fact that Han was still a good guy, risked his life, saved Luke, whatever. Um, even after that, Han once again risks his life for the Alliance when he goes out to shoot the probe. Admittedly, this is low, lower risk, and he's already survived before, but it's still good. Han still cares about Luke even after Leia kisses him, and Luke acts all, like, proud about it. I'm not gonna act like that in the next film, I'll tell you. Anyway, um, the, my main thing, though, is this is the biggest point in Han's favor. Han is under several layers of severe pressure at this point. The Empire is invading. Jabba wants his head. He has feelings for Leia. The Falcon isn't working correctly. It doesn't excuse his actions, but he's already kind of got a scoundrel-type character trait going on. So under these conditions, I feel like they're just going to be exacerbated. Again, that doesn't excuse the way he acted towards Leia at all. Uh, E-T-A-L, not and all. But, um, but I could have said that too. Um... But it does make it make more sense, if that helps. You know, I don't know if that helps, but it makes it make more sense. I think he's under a lot of pressure from a lot of different areas, not all of which, slash most of which he's handling well, but I think it's still valid to say, well, he's under a little bit of stress. Um, anyway, uh, the dinner scene is another point in his favor. Han just tries to shoot Vader. This is the most amazing thing, I think, in this whole film. He's just like, oh shit, it's Vader, I gotta shoot at him. He doesn't even think about it twice. Vader could have killed him on the spot through Force Choke. He doesn't even think about it. He just gets out and shoots him. Now, of course, you could say that was just self-preservation, that was Han being selfish, whatever. I still think it's amazing. I, I think, honestly, you could even have like an affirmation about this, or like a, a positive mental health thing. Like, be Han, like, at least in this context, um, that... Um, you know, um, there's there's just something so admirable about trying to shoot a Sith Lord with a laser. <laughs> like, think about this. Darth Vader's a Sith Lord, and Han's like a a rogue, a space pirate, you know? Like, he's not... He doesn't have any formal training. He's not a Jedi. He just shoots Vader. And, of course, Vader just puts up his hand and blocks it. But, I mean, props where props are due. That's amazing. Um, anyway, points against Han. Han's being a dick to Leia. I mean, <sighs> I, I feel like they're in this sort of contest where, like, it's a who can be the bigger dick to the other, because Leia's kind of a dick, too, while still being friends. And it's it's funny sometimes, but in other points, it's just kind of mean-spirited and not enjoyable. Um, you know, like, at one point, like, one of the bigger things that maybe audibly go, ugh, was uh, Han said something like, uh, you know, Leia's like, you know, you know, stop touching me or whatever, and 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 Han's like, well, sorry, I haven't got time for anything else. I'm like, ugh, like, there's no need to overly sexualize something that she already doesn't want to have be happening to begin with. The whole you like me because I'm a scoundrel thing. I don't like this. I don't like this whole second guessing women's emotions or or men's emotions or anybody's emotions. You don't know people's thoughts and emotions. Don't fucking second guess them or make them question how they feel. Like, you know, there's a fucking tactic for doing this, and I don't think Han is doing it necessarily, but he, he comes in that ballpark, if, now that I think about it, like gaslighting. Like, Han isn't necessarily gaslighting Leia, because he's not, I don't know that he's necessarily telling her things that happened aren't happening, but he's kind of telling her things that aren't necessarily happening are happening. And it's like, ugh, it's dicey. You know what's not dicey? You know what's absolutely shitty? The way that Han deals with Leia's consent, holy fuck, like, during that scene where they kiss, and, you know, like, Leia, I guess, is into it by the end of it, and I understand that, like, kissing and consent and stuff like that, it can be tricky, but she says no, like, there's no, there's not a lot of discrepancy here, Leia forcefully says no at first, or, or at least meekly, or what, what, she says no, is what I'm trying to say. She at least, she does not say yes, she does not give enthusiastic consent, she doesn't give any sort of consent. She's pretty clearly uncomfortable with Han's advances. Only after he kisses her does she kiss back. 
I don't know. I'm not going to second guess her because I just complained about that. You know, maybe she was into Han the whole time. That's not the way you find out, though. <laughs> if I went around kissing everybody who I thought was into me, I'd get sent to prison pretty fast. Um, anyway, here are some points for Leia um, because Gina kind of says that she does nothing. Um, she's got leadership for the first ten minutes, like Gina pointed out. That's something, but it's it's not much. Uh, Leia says that it's a trap. She said it before Akbar. Does anyone notice that? I never noticed that before. Leia shoots one stormtrooper, but then mostly has to do with Han, and I don't know. Leia is force sensitive. This sets up her. This sets her up for like later stuff, you know, in Return of the Jedi and possibly the new film. She learned how to drive the Millennium Falcon at some point. That's kind of cool. Um. Leia can scream really well. <laughs> Literally, like, this is something I thought that was in her face. Like, uh, Carrie Fisher can do screams really well. I don't know. I just I just thought it was funny. Um, more seriously, I love the I love you scene. Um, I, I hate how they get to that moment, but I love the moment in of itself. There's just these times where you know how someone feels, and you know what they want to say to you, but they just can't. And they finally do. And you say, I know. And it's just like, I, I really related to that. And I, again, I don't like how they got to that point. Consent, Han, consent. But um, it's still a great scene. And Chewie's anguish about, about Han is really touching. Their friendship is really great. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting a little choked up just talking about it. It, it, is, it, it deserves all of the hype that scene gets. Um, it is it is such a phenomenal scene. Um, it, it, that is actually really points for Leia and points for Han. It is just such a great scene. Um, I think the romance, from what I remember, is better in Return of the Jedi, but we'll see. It's been a while since I've watched these films, by the way. Um, it, it is just so great. Um, wow, I'm already at uh, probably 30 minutes at this point. So I, I love the I love you scene. Um, yeah. Uh, points against Leia. Leia's kind of just treated like an object to all the men. You know, well, at least, okay, not all the men. Well, kind of. Like, Luke looks like he just won the fucking, like, you know, World Series. Han is constantly invalidating her feelings and her consent, which is so shitty. And then Lando even treats her like that, too. It's just like, ugh. Um, so Leia's kind of a dick, too. Like, one, at one point she says, would it help if I pushed for fixing the Millennium Falcon? She's, it's not all Han. It's mostly Han, I'll say. And most of the things that Leia says that are dickish are spurred by Han. So, eh, for even, like, having this as a point against her. But she, she does sometimes go out of her way to be a dick to Han. It's, you know, not cool. Um, the next thing Gina says is Han is an asshole to see 3 po To be fair, 3 po is pretty annoying, and most people don't treat him nicely. So, I don't know. I, I'm not going to excuse it, but... Han's not really... Le Leia was, was, was kind of a dick to him, too, and... No one really likes C-3PO, kind of because C-3PO's high, strong, recommended they surrender to the Empire. I mean, Jesus Christ. So anyway, I, I don't really I don't really think that's a big deal. Han is an asshole to Chewbacca. Kind of true, but mostly just when Chewie's trying to fix the Falcon and Han is really stressed about it. And I mean, they're literally going to die if, if Chewie doesn't fix it or do it right. Kind of don't blame him for being an asshole in the moment. Um, it doesn't, you know, again, it doesn't justify anything, but whatever. Uh, Gina says the only people he isn't an asshole to are Luke, which he has all 30 seconds of screen time with, and Luke is unconscious. Yeah, I, that's true, but the things that he did for Luke were huge, like save his life. I don't know. He continues to be nice to him after the kiss. I, I still think it's a big deal, but it's not a huge deal. I kind of take the middle approach. I don't know. Uh, and then she says, and Lando, who he should have been a dick to. You know, I get that Lando double-crossed him, and I mean, after Lando does double-cross him, because, well, number one, Han thinks that they're friends, vaguely. So he's not going to be a dick to him, based on that, I guess, at least for La Lando. I don't know. That's not really how it works for other people, but it is how it works for Luke, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, but more to the point, I don't think being a dick to the guy who could easily have you killed, I mean, they, all, they get shot at when they don't remain on course in Cloud City, who could have easily have killed him and his friends with the number of guards that Lando had is a good idea. I mean, Lando's guards out outflanked the stormtroopers for instance you know would would han really want to risk something similar so and he give him credit where credit's due he is a dick after lando double crosses him i mean he punches him for god's sake so you know 
Uh, yet, and then she continues, yet somehow Leia mysteriously falls from him because confident ladies need alpha males or something. Yeah, the, the whole thing's bullshit, I agree. The, I'm just totally in agreement with Gina there. Nothing more to say. Speaking of Leia, what is the point of having her in this movie? Gina says this as well. Uh, as far as I can tell, mostly as a support to Han, which damages her character a lot. So me and Gina pretty much agree on Leia. Um, she says that I love Leia as much as the next person, but she does nothing. I think the most she does is have a few good screaming moments, like I said earlier, but yeah, she's mostly just romantic fodder for the movie. Sucks. Uh, in this film, she doesn't do anything but yell at people, is, is what uh, is also what Gina's saying. It's cool to see her in charge of the rebellion, but she does that for the first ten minutes of the movie, then the rest of her role in the movie is for her to yell slash fuss at Han and for Han to ignore because he's an asshole. Yeah, largely true. I can't argue there. She, uh, she says, Gina says that she seriously fires a gun once in the whole film. Well, I mean, she hit somebody, huh? That's something, right? That's not. Um, and then she says this from the same woman, excuse me, this from a woman who grabbed a blaster from Luke and got them all out of a tight jam in the first movie. I don't buy it, and it's annoying. Yeah, ditto. She says that Luke is better in this movie, but Mark Hamill just isn't good enough of an actor to carry the terrible lines they give him, especially when he's talking to a disembodied Ben after he discovers Anakin is his father. Like, seriously. I don't think Hamill's terrible, but I'll say that Ford, for all of his issues as a character, still largely carries the movie because he's just a watchable asshole. I think everybody pretty much does better than Hamill does, but I still don't think he's terrible. Um, this, the, the biggest part for Gina, though, she says, is that I fucking hate Yoda. I hate him training Luke. I also kind of hate the Jedi, but that's a different thing altogether. Don't worry, Gina. I got you covered. I, it's not a compendium. Sorry, picky. But it's something. Anyway, for someone who tells Lu she continues, for someone who tells Luke to be patient at every opportunity, he has absolutely no patience for Luke, who, by Yoda's own telling, is really too old to begin training. Are you so surprised that he's having a hard time with some uh, with some of this shit? Why did you send him to the mirror cave so soon? Seriously? Roar. She she did say roar. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm giggling out of, like, it being funny. Uh, other things, too. Um... I get the dislike of Yoda from from Gina here. Personally, I found his idiot routine kind of thing mildly entertaining. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't anything special either. It was basically what Obi-Wan does in the first film, or the previous film, except much more drawn out, drawn out, which, yeah, vaguely annoying, sure. The training didn't bother me. I didn't pay super close attention to it, though. Um, I will admit that. Um, that is one of the parts of the film I think I zoned out on. But I don't think it's boring. And also what got me was the discussions of the Force and stuff. I've already talked about that. Um, but I, I don't think it's bad. I, I I think Yoda's impatient because he's old. Because Yoda's old. And I get that Yoda saying that Luke needs to have patience is ironic, given that Yoda does not have patience himself. But what are you going to do? Yoda's fucking old. She also says, Also, the passage of time is not at all clear in the film. This could all, all happen in one day, for all we know, making Yoda's treatment of Luke even worse. Are Han and Leia on Cloud City for weeks or days? How long is Luke at Dagobah? Nobody knows. And it makes the movie weird and disjointed. Eh, I, again, I understand where she's coming from. I, I can see this, but it didn't, it didn't bother me. It didn't feel that way to me. I think you could have that complaint about almost any space movie. Probably because of the different systems and planets everyone goes to. Like, for example, Dagobah isn't just a planet, but it's a, its own system. While Han, and, uh, Honk, while Han and Leia are in an entirely different star system altogether. They're in the Anuat system uh, in, in on the planet Bespin, which uh, specifically in Cloud City, of course. So, of course, the passage of time isn't going to be similar. I also speculate that it's possible they did the passage of time so disjointedly, so they didn't want to have repetitive time frames or backgrounds, which I'm fine with. Um... You know, I don't know. Most of Gina's problems I sympathize with, or I can see. I either don't take them... I either completely agree, or I don't take them as far as she does. I'm kind of all over the place with her criticism, some of which I just completely disagree with, or I more so... Did. Like, with the Yoda thing, I don't hate Yoda. I don't think he's a terrible character. He's a little bland, I guess, but he's he's funny, and he's okay enough. You know, I, I don't feel strongly about Yoda, but either way, I guess. I like him. You know, 3.5 out of 5 is what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, she says, Yes, the flying scenes with the Falcon are really, really cool, especially for a movie of that time, and the lightsaber fights are a lot better than I remember them, but I just don't like many thing, much th much else about the movie, and that's disappointing. Yeah. Disappointed! I, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't agree with that, but I just wanted to make the reference to disappointed. Um, she says that she's so ready for the return of the Jedi, and hey, you know what? So am I. Uh, 